Welcome to our review on efficiency of biomass transfer. The first thing we need to do before we can talk about energy transfers within a food chain is to think about where the energy originates. And hopefully if we think back to key stage three, we'll remember that the sun is the ultimate source of energy. So what we find is that the producers absorb that light energy and that's then used in the process of photosynthesis. However, only about 1% of the energy transferred from the sun makes it to the chemical stores. One of the main reasons for this is that most of the light from the sun is actually reflected off the leaf, so it's not even absorbed into those cells. What we then find is that looking at how much of that remaining light energy ends up getting transferred to the chemical stores, is going to be controlled by factors like temperature and the water availability. What we actually find is that about half of the energy transferred by photosynthesis then gets transferred in respiration. So that's obviously going to be lost to the surroundings in the form of thermal energy, etc. The remainder ends up increasing the biomass of our organism. If we now consider what happens when one of our consumers eats our producer, then once that biomass has been digested, some of it we're going to lose as waste products. So feces and urine, those are going to be lost. Some of it is going to be lost as a result of providing energy for movement, for growth and so forth. And some of it will actually be transferred as a result of respiration to heat the surroundings. Now, the only other way that we will have our biomass being transferred through our horse is by it being turned into the new horse biomass. So we can see there's a variety of ways that it's actually lost and only one way that we actually get it remaining in the horse is it being converted into the biomass of the horse itself. So this energy transfer that we see going on through a food chain is not the most efficient process in the world. What we actually find is that those consumers at each trophic level only convert around 10% of the chemical energy into new body tissue for themselves. The rest of it is going to be lost through those processes we've just mentioned. So a few ways that we can lose our biomass. First of all, not all of an organism is eaten. It's not often that you see herbivores actually digging the roots up for the grass to eat them. So things like roots and bones are left behind, which means some of the biomass is not being transferred to the next trophic level. Some of that biomass will be used in respiration. So that obviously means that we're going to be producing ATP. That ATP is then used in the muscles to produce movement. And we get that thermal energy transfer to the environment as well. Third way is through this process of egestion, and this is where our bodies can't digest absolutely everything we take in. So any of that undigested material is then lost from the body as feces. And again, that's lost biomass. The last way is through excretion, which is where we've generated waste products, which are also lost from the body. And that would be things like the urine is made of waste products. As a result of all of these different energy losses through our food chain, what we actually find is that food chains themselves can't be infinite. They actually tend to be limited to four trophic levels due to that loss of energy. If you try to go beyond four trophic levels, there's just not enough energy left within that food chain to support life. So the reason that our trophic levels are limited to four in our main food chains is because there's just not enough energy available beyond that. So the last thing we need to do is work out how we can calculate the efficiency of our biomass transfer. Now, because it's efficiency, it's going to be a percentage as our answer. And in order to work it out, all we do is the biomass available after the transfer divided by the biomass available before the transfer. And then you multiply that by 100 to turn it into the percentage. Only thing to go careful of here is make sure that in the question they've not been a little bit tricky and put one in grams and one in kilograms. Make sure that it is the same unit for each. So you may have to convert. So an example of a question we could get is in italics there. So a lamb gains 12 kilograms in mass after consuming 150 kilograms of grass. Calculate the efficiency of the transfer. So biomass after divided by biomass before 
so our biomass after is 12 divided by the biomass before which is 150 and then times that by 100 gives us 8% efficiency. So hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe how biomass is lost between those different trophic levels. You can explain why the number of trophic levels is limited and you can calculate the efficiency of the biomass transfer.